Today we're going to take a look at getting started with Telerik's RAD diagram. RAD diagram is part of Telerik's RAD controls for Silverlight WPF control suite for .NET SAML development. RAD diagrams is an easy way to create rich and interactive diagrams simply and fast. In this video we will begin building our first application that uses RAD diagram from Visual Studio 2010. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are, we're back inside of Visual Studio 2010, and I'm going to create a new project today that uses Telerix RAD diagram control. So let's begin. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do File, New, Project, and I'm actually gonna take RAD controls, Silverlight application, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna give it a name. So the name I'm gonna give it is just Telerik RAD diagram. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and I'm going to host the Silverlight application in a new website and I'm just going to leave this as Silverlight 5 for the version of Silverlight. After I press OK, it takes just a second to spin up but then you'll see the project configuration wizard. Since I know that I'm going to use diagrams, I can simply put a check in telerik.windows.controls.diagram and it will automatically add the other references needed to use the diagrams control. And as you see here, it added three for us. Next, I can go ahead and click Finish, and our project will finish spinning up. The first thing that we will see here is the XML namespace Telerik has already been added for us in this application. We can also look over here in our references and see that Telerik.windows.controls, Telerik.windows.controls.diagram, and Telerik.windows.diagrams.core has already been added to our project for us. So let's begin using the RAD diagram control. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my grid and I'm just going to type in Telerik and then RAD diagram and I'm going to give it a name. This name is just going to be called Diagram. And we'll just go ahead and give it a margin while we're here. Now, once that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the tag. And you can see that we already have a grid in the background of our application. So I'm going to come up here now and I'm going to add just a little bit of data to this. So I'm going to begin with Telerik Rad Diagram Shape and I'm going to give this a content of diagram number one and I'm going to give it the position of negative 400 and negative 200. Then I'll go ahead and I'll close out of this tag. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste in about five more rad diagram shapes here for us. And so as you see here we have the content set as diagram 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have a couple of different positions located here and then I started giving it a name of S1, S2, S3, and S4. So as I pasted uh, those shapes in, we can see that on our design window here that a couple of the shapes appear that have a position um, inside of this window. So now that that's in place, uh, what I want to do is I actually want to connect some of these shapes together. So I can begin by coming back here and typing in Telerik Rad Rad Diagram Connection and we're just going to put the source will be binding to an element name of S1. The target is going to be binding to an element name of S2. And as you see, once we finish that, we now have a connection that's been made to an item that you can't see just yet. So one thing to note here is that the source is the original item 
and the target is the item that it needs to be bound to. So let's go ahead and add in two more connection points here and as well as add a seventh diagram shape. So we added in two more points. We set the element name to S3 and S4. You can see them in our designer here. So if we go ahead and we run our application now, you'll see that we have a couple of diagrams here and we can zoom in and zoom out with the mouse wheel but there's a couple of other things that we're going to need to do here as far as maybe the user wants the ability to pan these items and to be able to see all of the other diagrams that's not listed here. So let's go back to our project. I'm just going to hit close on that window and I'm going to drop three buttons onto our form. And we're going to use these buttons to toggle a property on our rad diagram called active tool. We're going to be able to toggle this to either a connector tool, which allows us to connect lines, a pan tool, which allows us to pan the diagram, or a pointer tool, which allows us to do some editing. So I went ahead and I pasted in the content and added some event handlers for those three buttons as you can tell here connector pan tool to pointer tool so I'm going to go back to my code behind page and you just see we have a couple of buttons set up here so the first one I'm just going to type in diagram dot active tool equals telerik dot windows dot diagrams dot core dot mouse tool dot connector tool And now I'm going to go ahead and set up the other two event handlers to point to the pan tool and to the pointer tool. Let's go ahead and jump back into our project and see what this looks like. So we're going to go debug, start without debugging. We're back to our diagram. And the first button I'm going to hit here is the pan tool. So when I click on the pan tool, you'll see we're now able to pan these items in our dot rad diagram control. If I switch this over to the connector tool, you can see we can easily connect items with just one click. And then finally we have a pointer tool which will allow us to edit data as well as maybe make some changes in the angle for a specific ailment. This video is just a taste of some of the things that you can do with Telerik's RAD diagram. Be sure to check out other parts of the series to learn things such as copy, pasting, cutting and deleting elements, to adding in custom shape elements, to customizing the look and feel, to even using RAD diagram with RAD ribbon bar. So please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements.